Hello and welcome to our video of about quantitative resources in Control M70. Now quantitative resources can be used for many different reasons. We use them here as a Q indicate indicator and we use them to limit the number of jobs that can run at any given point in time. There is the ability to use them as a memory or CPU allocation tool. Uh, for the number of jobs or to limit the jobs and how much resources that they use but uh, we're not going to cover that right now what we're going to do is talk about just creating them and how we use them normally uh, we generally create three resources on every job uh, we create a BMC resource which is our system resource which we keep unlimited at all times we create a uh, group resource or a region resource in this case it's called consumer which we would also normally keep unlimited and then we create a specific application resource in this case we call that resource Josh now we can limit these resources to any number we want an example of how we would use the BMC resource would be if we had downtime on the system that we couldn't allow any jobs to run on we would go ahead and limit that BMC resource to zero or to a specific number of jobs so that we could run some test jobs or any other job to make sure that the system was stable afterwards and the consumer resource we would use if it are that particular region or that group was having downtime uh, we could or major system issues like a FTP issue on main servers or any number of reasons and we would go ahead and limit that to a specific number or down to zero to stop all of their jobs nearly instantaneously or at least any new ones from executing and then this particular application resource if uh, there were limitations on the servers that that group used or if we wanted to use it more as a class or queue as some people would call it uh, we could limit the number of jobs that could run at any given time or even just limit the resources available for particular jobs to run a lot of people would use this as a waiting system for example we could change this number to five and then if there were only ten Josh resources available this particular job would go ahead and use five of those resources which means if based on priority of the job and the flow requirements there weren't five of those resources available this job would wait until five became available before it ran or when it was running it would only allow five other resources to run at any given time Uh, what we're going to do now is show you how to manipulate those quantitative resources. Now we are in the Enterprise Manager EM. Uh, the green icon is quite a large group of people know it as. And we go ahead and go to Tools and then Quantitative Resources, or you can use the shortcut keyboard keys, Control Shift Q. We could limit to where we only see a particular resource. In this case, I'm only going to look for the resource named Josh. It's going to show me all that are defined, in use, or required. And it's going, I'm going to look at all the different data centers. So if I have that same resource in, in uh, Test QA or Devel, as you see, I have it in all of them, uh, it'll show me how many are in there across all the data centers. Uh, as you saw here, I had to delete my previous filter that I had set up. This, the, both filters, the filter that it asks you when you come in, are slightly different than a limiting filter and then an overall filter. So what I can do here now is I can manipulate the available uh, quantitative resources name Josh in any of the queue or in this case I'm just going to delete it so I can show you how to create a new one for the test QA queue. So once deleted now there are no resources available. If I had a job running over in the system right now it would actually that, that required the resource it would say that there's one pending. So I'm going to go ahead and restart this one and see if it has a resource on it. Oh, 
actually. I believe if I do a Y on this one, it should say yes. Quantitative resource, Josh, needed one, none are reserved. So this job right here, because there are none in test QA, which is the data center this job resol resides, it uh, needs that to be able to run. So you'll see it here in a blue status. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do now is create a quantitative resource. And if you didn't see that, I hit the little green plus sign. They make this really difficult. I type the quantitative resource name that I want. I pick the specific data center I want it in, and I type how many quantitative resources that there should be available max. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put 10 quantitative resources there. You'll see it show up in gray, and then once you do a refresh here, you'll see that instantaneously that job kicked off, and it's a cyclic job, so it's already run. And it shows in use of one, nine available, 10 max. And actually, now I've gone and refreshed it, and now all 10 are back to being available. Now, you can manipulate this various ways, uh, quantitative resources. I've actually set up uh, specific jobs that can do this um, to manage my queues and how many quantitative resources there are. Now, these are all uh, control M specific jobs, so you may have to have an admin set up the job for you. But you can see the command here I'm updating, I'm updating the quantitative resource name, and I am making five available at a specific time. And this is this job has a submit between 1 and 1.15. So between 1 and 1.15 in the morning, this job will actually update my quantitative resources to where only five can run. Now, that allows possibly the server to run other jobs on it uh, more effectively or just to limit the amount of resources that I can use at that time. So as you can see, quantitative resources can be scheduled, they can be manually manipulated, and they can also be uh, linked to uh, various system resources like memory and CPU, which will cover that and this particular updating of the resources in a future video. I hope this video was helpful. Please leave me any suggestions in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to improve upon these videos in the future. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Thank you.